Welcome everyone to the fastest speedway in all of the United States. It is Talladega week here in the 1UP Superstar Series. This tie bank 2.66 mile oval has been known as a treacherous racetrack since its inception. And now it's the 1UP Superstar Series first chance to tackle these 33 degrees of banking at blistering speeds for 57 laps around the, this track. And... Alongside me in the booth today is someone no, that's no stranger to success on the Super Speedways. It's Turbo Truck Series Pensacola winner James Ellison in the booth with me today. And j this track is about a half mile shorter than Pensacola, but the speeds are just the ex are just the same. So expect a lot of three wide, maybe even some four wide. And the threat of the big one has been lurking since we unloaded here. It's going to be... I expect there to be a lot of similarities to what happened at Pensacola for all three series there. But at the same time, I honestly think that there's going to be some uniqueness to it because it's its own track and has its own features. There's no telling what we're going to see today. And that, that's certainly the case for every single one of the 57 laps awaiting us here in the Aaron's 499 at Talladega. And we can give you the full starting lineup now for today's race. It's been a perf a great start to the season for Daniel Bouchard. Three top tens in the first six races. And he compounds his successes with his first career pole today at Talladega. It might not mean much considering we're at a super speedway, but it guarantees him a berth into the 2023 shootout. So that's certainly something to be proud of. And it's an all Genesis engineering front row with Diego Yepes lining up alongside his teammate Bouchard, with, followed by three Toyotas running out the top five, Stephen Hunter, Anderson Reed, and Roberto Crown Jr. But really, you can win this race from anywhere in the field. Even guys in the back like Felix Anderson, Zachary Fitzwater, J.Q. Halleck, and Devin Fair, they're not out of it be just because they're starting at the back. It, t it doesn't take long to get from the back to the front here. Uh, it's it's definitely a track where if you got the car that can keep with the pack, like you said, J.Q. Halleck, Fitzwater, Reeves, Fair, they could all find themselves coming up to the front real quick and and even Polstead or Bouchard could find himself all the way at the back of the pack with, within a lap. So that being said, the cars are lined up on the Talladega grid, and we're ready to bring you 57 laps of racing action. It's the Aaron's 499 at Talladega Super Speedway, and the green flag is mere moments away. This is a race you're not going to want to miss a second of, because the action is going to be fast and hot for every single one of the 57 laps in front of us. Stay tuned, folks. You're not going to want to miss a second of the Aaron's 499, the one-up superstar series here at Talladega Super Speedway. Coming into the restart zone, the green flag is already out in the air, and the Aaron's 499 is underway. We've already got cars fanning out deeper in the pack. You're allowed to make that move to the right if you need to to try and establish some position early on as they barrel off into turn one on the high banks of Talladega. It is a Genesis Engineering front row, and they are side by side, several rows deep, coming off of turn two for the first time. Yeah, I already got some three wide back there, and then this, this gets interesting. And it's going to be three right for the lead right here already, down the back stretch here. But it looks like Diego Yepes is actually going to clear Daniel Bouchard for the race lead. And now it's Yepes in control of the race with Stephen Hunter and Roberto Crown Jr. pushing him along in the 77. And no, no incident to speak of on the opening lap. Diego Yepes rounds the front, rounds the tri-oval here and will complete lap number one in the race lead. We've only completed one lap, but the average speed has already climbed past 200. And we expect that to keep going up and up as this race progresses because these are Pensacola level speeds we're approaching at Talladega here. And already pulls to Bouchard, like I was talking about before in the free race. He's starting to fall back already. All it took was Yepes clearing him, and he's getting freight trained a little bit. Okay, now he's gotten on the inside. He's just falling right back there to, like, seventh right now. He's pushing Kevin Carter in the 70, and he's being pushed by Jared Polanski in the 18. But right now, Diego Yepes continues to hold his lead at Talladega. This is something we haven't, we didn't really see a whole lot of at Pensacola, is one guy be able to control the pack like this, managing both lanes, managing every lane possible to try and hang on to the race lead. Yepes is doing a pretty good job of it. He's holding on 
managing all the lanes of traffic. He's got Roberto Crown Jr. pushing him. That's a great super speedway partner right there. Kevin Carter, another good one. But ideally, he'd like to get that 73 back to his bumper so they can hook up and take off. Yeah, right now it's just a matter of seeing who your partners are where you can find them. I mean, early on, it's nice to be able to try to have some drafting help from a friend or a teammate, but in races like this, you're not always going to be able to afford that luxury. And right now, Bouchard working his way back up there to second again. So now it is a Genesis Engineering 1-2 back at the front again. Yep is ahead of Bouchard and William Brock in the 93, the other Genesis car, making his way to the front of the field as well. That black and gold number 93 on the inside line being pushed by... By Lane Sanders, the Pensacola 500 winner from a year ago. He knows his way around the super speedways as well. And they're two by two, about 10 rows deep, coming off of turn four at Talladega to enter the tri -oval. Remember, start finish line is not located in the middle of the tri -oval like it is at some other super speedways, but it is right here coming out of the tri -oval, And that has dictated the outcome of many races here in the past. And our. And Yep, as so far as being able to hang on, right now he's got, uh, who's that right behind him, the 84, That's, I think? That is J.D. Martin in the 66 Cartoon Network Chevrolet, who has given Diego Yep as a push, but now here comes Christian Vargas, the defending series champion in the 54 Toyota, pushing Martin along in the 66, and it's starting to get a bit single file at the front. The first three have broken that single file with Yep as Martin, Vargas and now Jake McMillan getting breaking ahead of Jared Polanski. Lane Sanders trying to do the same. Yeah, that was a uh, my mistake there. I couldn't see the numbers right away, but you know, JD doing pretty good here until just now as he gets put to the high side. And Yep has just he's been able to maintain control of this thing pretty well, and that's pretty impressive. It, like I said, it's something we don't often see at Pensacola. We, of course, once the field gets spread out after pit stops, it's a little more common. But at the beginning of the race, it's quite uncommon to see one driver be able to dictate the pace on a super speedway. But Yepes is doing a phenomenal job at it. But now he's got a hungry challenger in Jake McMillan right behind him. McMillan has not won a race since Watkins Glen two years ago. He is desperate for a win, and he's doing a pretty good job running he's, this season so far. He's sixth in the points, and he'd love nothing more than to get a win and on a super speedway or not to boost himself into the championship conversation. It's a bit. It's never too early to start talking about the championship, especially when we've got a hotly contested season like this. And here comes McMillan down the inside trying to take the lead away. Yeah, he had Lane Sanders behind him there, but Sanders moved to the high side, and now the 51 is coming in there again. Hunter, he's he's wanting to get back up there and try to do something. Finally, it looks like someone's going to try to do something. Yep, as they're almost going too, too wide there, or three wide there, excuse me, for third to sell it out, which is a good thing, but woo, look back there. There's a lot of action deep in this field as Diego Yepes held on to the lead for a brief moment, Ooh. but now... This three wide, four wide pack barreling down the back stretch at over 225 miles per hour. This is a staple of the one up Superstar Series. This high speed, high intensity racing on the super speedways. But it looks like Jake McMillan's finally going to get the help he needs from Stephen Hunter to try and push his way ahead of the 77. Diego Yepes has led every lap in this race so far, but he might not be, be leading at the end of this one. It'll all depend on who gets to the line first. I think it actually Yepes did get it. At the line, he sure did, but only by the smallest of margins, a hundredth of a second, separating Yepes and McMillan as they head off into turn one again. Yeah, coming out of turn two, Lane Sanders got pushed to the high side. He's just falling back, falling back there, and nature of the racing. But yeah, McMillan here, he, he is not giving up, that's for sure. And one th place you do not want to be at Talladega, especially in the Superstar Series, up against that wall in the high groove. Normally you'd say you don't want to be in the middle lane because that's where all the intensity happens. As Jake McMillan now finally clears Diego Yepes, he will assume the lead of this race for the first time on number 9. But as I was saying, you do not want to get up against that wall because we've seen it often in testing here and in practice earlier this week. If you get up against that wall, it'll scrub 20 to 30 miles an hour of speed 
off of your car, and that'll send you right to the back of the pack, and it might even cost you the draft altogether. We've seen it happen in testing and in practice earlier this week, and it could rear its ugly head in the race, as now Sam Denoto makes a move for the race lead with help from an unlikely challenger, Justin Henley, in the 42 making his first start on a super speedway. Remember, he failed to qualify for the Pensacola 500, but he's doing a very good job running now in the fourth position. He started deep in the field, but only on lap 11, he's all the way up in the top five. Yeah, very good for Henley there. Yeah, like you said, he started deep in the field. He was 35th at the start of this thing, and now here he is right behind Denoto trying to make things happen. Clearly, the equipment not slowing him down. Henley Bemidji Motorsports, one of the newer teams to the Superstar Series, and it's clearly not slowing him down any. He's now giving the push of his life to Sam Donato to try and take the lead away from Jake McMillan and maybe even take it himself. But now Blair in the 19 makes a move to the inside, pushes Henley into the middle. But now coming across the line, Sam Donato takes the lead of the Aaron's 499 by the... I an oh so slim margin over Jake McMillan. Yeah, this is some really good racing. They're now the three wide from from fourth, fifth, and sixth on back, and this is this is getting intense. And, you know, they they talk about that super speedway racing, the plate racing especially, that volcano. I'm beginning to wonder if it's starting to rumble. We've yet to, we haven't seen any major accidents in practice so far. No one had to drop to the rear because of it. But now, here comes our resident super speedway expert, Blair in the 19, and this Bang Energy Ford. He's going to try and take the lead from Sam Denoto, not quite going to make it. But how about, but talking about Justin Henley being a, an, an, an unlikely challenger, how about this purple and yellow number 27 of Casey Cooper? He started further back than Henley did. This is only his seventh Superstar Series race, and he's making a move for in the top five. And this BTB Motorsports number 27, of course, he now gets pushed to the middle, and now Nelson Reeves, with help from GQ Halleck, is making a move for the lead here. At Reeves, Halleck, we talked about it. There they are. Yep, they started far, pretty far back in the pack, but now they're in the front, and it only took them 13 laps to get there. J.Q. Halleck with a, with a new red look for the number four, usually the purple and yellow of Royal Purple. Now it's the red of Circuit City on board for J.Q. Halleck, and now they take the lead from Nelson Rees with help from Echo Ross in the 39, another rookie in the Superstar Series. Echo Ross now, she's going to try and make a move on J.Q. Halleck to try and take the lead away. With help now, it was from Kevin Carter, but now Anderson Reed pushing the 39 out to the lead. And Reed up here doing a pretty good job here. That So many... The, this is the... Plate, plate racing, as has been said in many different times and different broadcasts, is a great equalizer. Teams that don't normally fare pretty very well and are accustomed to getting lapped at the short tracks and just having average days at best are getting a chance to shine here and it's it's really nice to see echo ross that's her first lap led in her one-up superstar series career but now anderson reed to the point but that could come under fire now as roberto crown jr makes a move to the bottom with jeff bolton to his immediate outside roberto crown jr had four straight top tens to start the season hasn't had the best of actually he has five straight top tens to start the season has finished outside the top 10 in the last few races but it roberto crown jr doing a pretty good job gets a bonus point right there for leading that lap but now stephen gale's gonna try and take the lead and how about the 64 of daniel voiles making his first super speedway start of the season in this bear on manufacturing toyota for team day spring Daniel Voiles, like you said, it's a great equalizer to Super Speedways, and Voiles putting up that on full display right here. Yep, Gale just holding on to the lead right now with uh, Crown Jr. Right, it's it's nice to see these guys up here. I mean, some of the, some of the other races I've I've been on with, they just these cars just have been at the back of the pack. We don't really talk about them except if they're in an incident. And Stephen Gale, remember, he has not been to Victory Lane in quite some time. It's been a while. It's been since 2020 that Stephen Gale last went to Victory Lane. He's got two career wins, but it's been a, a long time since he's gotten one. Wouldn't it be something to bring Sinclair Canada Racing their first win 
as a team here at Talladega. But now, Roberto Crown Jr. makes a move to the inside of the 35, and but he doesn't have much help. Neither of them do, actually. The closest help is William Brock and Henry Thomas, and they're a few car lengths back. So Roberto Crown Jr. is using his raw horsepower to get around this 35. That is an impressive feat. But now he's got William Brock to help him ahead, and Roberto Crown Jr. will lead lap number 17. Yep, I, I kind of figured he wasn't going to stick around behind, behind the 35 for long, and he's going for it now. And like I said, Brock back there, he, I'm sure he'd like to lead a lap or two, maybe even come home with, with the checkered flag, but it's still pretty early to, to know who's going to win. Three cars on the inside line, all looking for their first career wins. Roberto Crown Jr., William Brock, and how about Jason Parker in this 76 car? He's already made more starts this year than in, than in all of last year combined. He only qualified for four races last year. This will be his seventh start of the season, and Parker doing a pretty good job in another BTV Motorsports entry, number 76. But now he gets pushed up into the middle lane with Miles Mashburn getting to his inside. Devin Fair right behind him. Fair started the shotgun on the field dead last, and now DL Waits making some noise in the bottom groove as Roberto Crown Jr. powers off. And it looks like we have our first minor incident on the race. It is Jake McMillan. In this 21 car, I said I was warning about this earlier in the race. When when you get up into that outside wall, it scrubs off a whole ton of speed. And it is very easy for you to lose the draft altogether. And I fear that might be right just what happened to this 21 car. And yeah, that's very unfortunate because he was right up there not, not even 10 laps ago. It was... And in, to, in, to see him just get, get up there... More than likely, hit the wall. Hit the wall even just slightly, and now he's gonna have to pray for a caution, or his his race is over. You can see McMillan already about a second off the leaders at this point in time. Is now William Brock makes a move down to the inside of Roberto Crown Jr. with help from Devin Fair and Mark Davey. First time we've mentioned the Pensacola 500 winner's name all afternoon in the 01 Ford. And, but he's he started pretty deep in the field as well, and now he's pushing Devin Fair, who's pushing William Brock, out into the lead of the Aaron's 499. So as we complete lot number 20, William Brock takes the lead of the race, but it's we still got 38 cars of the 39 that started in this lead pack, all in the mix for victory. Yeah, Mark Davey, he, he didn't have a very good time at Road America. I felt bad for him. He, he had some pretty good runs going, and... Now, as long as he can stay good here as McMillan continues to drop back, I honestly think Davey could be able to redeem himself just, even just just a little bit here if as long as this four wide he just found himself in doesn't get to be a problem. And he now is perilously close to that outside wall. That is not where you want to be on this racetrack. You want to be hooked onto that double yellow line on the bottom of the racetrack because that is where you are the safest from danger into that outside wall. But it just goes to show you, a lot of these guys are taking these gambles because they know that the Talladega, like you said, is a big equalizer. And it'll, it, it could bring you, bring you home a checkered flag or it could bring you home on the wrecker. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's basically just like one big game of, of chess at over 200 mile an hour. You got you to gotta think... You gotta sometimes you gotta think quick. Sometimes you gotta be patient, it, and sometimes it's just not gonna be enough. Before you know it, game over. How about Devin Fair taking the lead here? This is his first lap out in the lead since Bristol all that time ago, where he led 47 laps in that race before finishing runner-up to Jeffrey Finguy that day. But Devin Fair doing a pretty good job. He started last in this race, and it only took him 22 laps to get to the lead. It might be short-lived, though, because here comes a whole train of cars on the inside line, led by J.D. Martin, Justin Henley, Bobo Jones, and Lane Sanders in the 41. This could send the 08 to the back of the train in a big hurry, as now... Oh, that was a close call for all those guys, but they're oh. three, they, they maintain three-wide formation as J.D. Martin leads the lap. Yep, and uh, they're, they're fanning out this a little bit here, and Fair is, seems to not be falling, falling back as much because he's got a little bit of help, but he's still dropping just a bit, and and we got, got 66 up here just doing a really good job with the 
I'm stumbling over my words here. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, but we've got we might have a lead change here. Justin Henley in the 42 trying to take the lead for the first time in his career, but he gets pushed up high now by Sam Denoto in the double zero. Who's gonna take the lead at the start finish line? Could Justin Henley get the first lap lead of his career? No, no, Sam Denoto gets the lead at the start finish line, and that is where the lap counts. So Justin Henley will have to tuck back in and wait for another opportunity. And here's a name we haven't mentioned all afternoon. It's blue and white number 10 of Justin Hutchinson. He's pretty good at these big, big race tracks. He got both his wins last year at Las Vegas, a, bit some, a, bit, a high speed track similar to this. But the pack racing is unique only to here. And now Hutchinson gets a push from Stephen Hunter and Duke Ansack with Pulsator Bouchard right behind. Yeah, it looked like Hunter was going to try to make a move, but uh, there there was no there were to go without going below that double yellow line, and uh, that's uh, dangerous territory there. No matter if no matter if it's legal or not. Absolutely. Now Justin Hutchinson, he led that lap by a small margin, and he's going to try and lead another one here with a push from Stephen Hunter, Duke Ansack in the bottom groove. As we've got, we still have 38 cars in this lead draft, all hungry for a victory. Some looking for their first win, some looking for their second, others looking for eight or nine. Just goes to show you the a level of talent we have in the one of Superstar Series. We're closing in on halfway, which will come in three laps time. And I'm per personally impressed we have made it this far into the race without an incident. I don't want to jinx anything, commentators curse and everything, but we have gone 26 laps without a single incident aside from Jake McMillan's slight brush with the wall. But, but even if you don't count that, we've had a very clean race at Talladega as, as foreign as those words are to me. It's hard to believe, honestly, as uh, we got another attempt for the lead here, and it looks like Stephen Hunter going for it again. Hunter makes a move to the inside. He's got Jeffrey Finn guy pushing him along. These two tied at the top of the all-time wins list with eight apiece. Finn guy got his record-tying eighth last week at Road America, and now they're side-by-side -side for the lead here at Talladega. It's, fate just seems to work that way sometimes. Because now Jeffrey Finn guy leads his first lap of the afternoon with a push from Jared Polanski. He's looking for his eighth career win as well in that 18 car. We've... Polanski's not known to be the best at the super speedways, but it goes to show you, if you got a good enough car under you and a, and a strong enough drive behind the wheel, you can do magical things. Here he goes. As Polanski now makes a move to the inside for the race lead with help from Jeff Bolton and Blair in the 19 right behind. And honestly, I I would not be surprised if Polanski could pull this off. It'd be, it'd be, he's already got a win from Atlanta early this year. And I don't think he'd complain about having a Talladega victory. No, he would not. He, enter, he enters this race pretty far back in the point standings. He's in a playoff position, but he's used to, run, to running it in the top five in points, not in the top 15. He wants another win to boost himself back into the conversation. And honestly, for him, the, the, the best place to get a victory is the next race because he really loves winning. And if he were to tie Finn Guy and Hunter on that all times wins list with eight, that would just be sweet, sweeter than ever. Because Polanski, like I said, he loves to win races. And now he's got a push from Jeff Bolton and the 19 of Blair, both Fords. But they're doing a good job pushing this Toyota. What I think Polanski would like is for that other Toyota back there of Anderson Reed to be right there. Because Toyota's worked well together. It, but like you said earlier, at this point in time in a race, as we're past halfway, your friends are where you can find them. Yeah, and he, he's just... I think he's liking who he's got behind him, even if they're not so well, okay, maybe not so much now, as uh, you got got a move for second place here. Bolton going to lose that to the 19 here. Yeah, Blair in the 19. She's really good at the super speedways. Hasn't gotten a super speedway win yet before, but she's come close a lot of times as she makes a swift chop on Anderson Reed to defend that position. And we're coming to the point in this race where if we continue to go caution-free, we should, we'll expect to see some green flag pit stops here shortly, and that will really thin out the field in a big way. No more of this 38 car pack once the pit stops start. That we'll, we'll expect to see these cars in smaller packs being split up by the pit stops. And as, we, as I'm oh. about to can elaborate further, we've got a three wide move for the lead. Anderson Reed to the inside. 
Yeah, Blair was trying to make the move, and re and Anderson was just like, uh-uh, my turn. Anderson Reed takes the lead for the first time all afternoon in this 15. He's looking for his first career win as well. He, he has been noted to be a good super speedway racer, as Mark Davey now might be in danger of losing the lead draft. In the 0-1, he's quite a ways behind the leaders, but he's he's doing enough of a job to hang on to the back of this pack. If these guys start slowing up for whatever reason, he and he stay, keeps his foot to the floor, and as long as these guys keep staying side by side, he could have a chance to regain the lead draft, something that Jake McQuillan was unable to achieve. Yeah, it, it's kind of unfortunate, because I, I was talking good about him earlier, I'm pretty sure this is that if, if things don't improve for him, that might be a commentator's curse, and I I will I will definitely apologize if that's the case. But Anderson Reed up back up the front, he's he's got got an attack coming from Finn guy once again. With a push from Yepes in the 77, who dominated the early portion of this race, now Jeffrey Finn guy takes a turn at the lead of the field. It's always it's always a game where you've got to time your moves just right to be at the front on the end of lap 57 because you don't want to be leading at the end of lap 33 if you can help it. It's nice to get a point for that, but everybody who's at the front right now has already led this race. So, you want to time your moves to be at the front at the end of lap 57 because that's when they pay out the points. Yeah, and it looks like, oh, maybe, well, I was going to say Yepes, but here goes Polanski again. We'll see how this goes here, and Yepes gets it. By a thread at that. But Yepes does hold hold the lead, but he might not keep it for long because now we've got two Kings Motorsports teammates on the inside, Jared Polanski and Nelson Reeves. These two work well together in the draft. Uh, would be pretty expected of them as as teammates, of course. But you see Mark Davey just starting to lose a little more touch with the lead draft. Jake McMillan's already about three quarters of a lap down by now. But Jared Polanski with help from his teammate Nelson Reeves coming off a of turn four. We'll see if Polanski can make some gains here on the inside pushing uh, past Diego Yepes coming to the stripe it looks as though I think Yepes got him once again but that was a very close margin if that was the case and it is yep yeah, and yeah. all right now it's looking like the top four are pretty much on even ground though Polanski looks like he might get advantage unless of course Reed oh, we've gets got, past here we've got one on the wall and it's Anderson Reed in the 15 oh and, no and unlike Mark and unlike Jake McMillan earlier in the race, he's taken a few guys with him who weren't even into the wall. These guys back here, Sam Denoto is among them, Lane Sanders in the 41. Let me see who else is in there. KJ Hayes, the rookie in the 46, Jason Parker in the 76. They're all now at risk of losing the lead draft. Although, this might not be a bad time to hang out at the back because we're closing in on the pit window now. About two laps from now is when the window will open to make the end. Well, if you pit now, you could make the end of the race. But I think these guys want to stretch this as long as they possibly can. Try and get to, and hopefully catch a yellow to try and pit under yellow fly conditions and stay in a big pack. But for these guys, if, if they don't get a yellow, this could be a big, big trouble for them. And right now, as these guys keep up here, keep jostling for position, we could end up get, giving those guys who just got knocked back out of the pack a yellow. But they've been able to keep it together so far as we're now 36 laps in. I am absolutely impressed. And it still continues to be Jared Polanski and Diego Yepes side by side. And doesn't doesn't Talladega Racing just provide this sometimes? You got Diego Yepes' teammate William Brock pushing Jared Polanski on the bottom for a brief moment. And then you got Polanski's teammate, Nelson Reeves, on the outside, working with Yepes, but now they're three wide for the lead. William Brock now makes a move on the inside as they close up on Jake McMillan to try and put a lap on him. McMillan will, like <coughs> will likely be the first car to go a lap down, but this pack is very hungry as we, we now have 20 laps to go at Talladega. Yeah, this is the, this is the point of the race where you just got to... Mind yourself, and uh, I have to say, where, where's Fitzy? Because he, he, he's about to get annoyed. Lap traffic becomes a factor, even if it's just one car. It plays havoc with the leaders at, at these super speedways. We saw it at Pensacola, and I'm sure we'll see it again in a few seconds at Talladega. Jake McMillan now falls victim to the, la to the lap oh, down curse, yeah. as we got pit stops now. 
for the first time today. On lap number 38, we got Devin Fair making pit stop, Lane Sanders, J.D. Martin, uh, Mark Davey already made his pit stop. That's why he's well off the pace in the 01. But we've got a lot of guys on pit road right now. And this is where the pit cycle will begin in its full entirety right here. And uh, because of the way the, the pit cycle began right as they started catching up to the 21, that, that could have easily avoided the big one right there. And a lot of people are probably breathing the sight relief. I don't know about the people stuck behind the 21 right now, though. That's kind of... Whoa! Yep, here, here comes the second wave, and William Brock with a huge head of steam into the pit lane. We ho I hope he didn't get caught speeding on entry, because that will absolutely destroy your race if you get a penalty for that. In the pits, as it looks like we got one car with a little bit of damage. Maybe he got rear-ended coming into the pits... I believe that's the 38 of Jeff Bolton. Yes, it is Jeff Bolton in that green car with a lot of damage on the back end of that car. He'll likely take a little extra time in the pits, but that can be costly. As now, we're trying to find their leader in this race. It's, it's a bit hard to find, considering we, we only have three cars that stayed on the racetrack. Stephen Gale, Nick Ortiz in the 91, and Andres Molina in the 7. Those three are due on pit road any moment now. But, as you can see, we're cycling through green flag pit stops as we speak on lap number 40. Yeah, I never thought I'd see today. We have live green flag pit stops at a super speedway. But sure enough, this is where we stand with 17 laps to go in the Aaron's 499. Yeah, this, this pit cycle is going to be interesting because it, it's jumbling everything up right now. And I don't know where... where... Oh, the 91's in. They're, I'm pretty sure that's everybody who hasn't pit yet. Yep, and uh, that'll... That, no, you are correct, and that will say could lead to William Brock in the 93. However, he is a sitting duck all by himself out there, and there is a train of four cars back there that are going to catch him in a very big hurry. He's going to have to do a very good job blocking them if he's going to have any hope of keeping this lead right here. Yeah, he, he's doomed if he doesn't watch out because, well, then again, they're starting to go side by side because there goes Polanski going after, after after a spot and doing so with somebody coming off pit road. That was a bit scary. Yep, and now the top, the top four or five are constantining together once again. William Brock, is he going to make the block? Yes, he is. Brock, Brock does block off Polanski, and now William Brock holds the lead. We've got 15 to go. Could Brock be in position to get his first career win? As it looks like, the field has now been thinned down to about 10 cars in contention to win this race. William Brock, Jared Polanski, the lap car of J.D. Martin's in there as well. But Stephen Hunter is there, Cale Tescar Jr. is there. Roberto Crown Jr., Stephen Gale, Kaysen Cooper in the 27 is up there. Christian Vargas, Devin Fair, and Felix Anderson in the 53. Haven't mentioned his name all day, but those are your 10 contenders at the moment because everybody else was shuffled out in the pit stops and are in their own packs further back in the field. Yeah, right now Polanski's enjoying a comfortable lead as uh, J.D. Martin's kind of holding up uh, Tescar Jr. and others there. and Well... Right now, it looks like the 66 in the middle of the pack, even being a lap down, he's holding his own, but at the same time, that's just giving Polanski plenty of room to breathe. Absolutely. As now, Polanski has a pretty solid lead with J.D. Martin acting as the buffer, but as, as you can see on the leaderboard, we got at least four distinct packs right now. So we've got a lot of interesting things to keep our eye on at the moment, but... I don't know, because here comes Roberto Crown Jr. He makes his move under J.D. Martin to ha try and help his teammate Polanski, but I don't, know, I don't know if teammates are even a thing at this point in the race, because Roberto Crown Jr. wants his first career win, and he wants it bad. And if it comes at the expense of his teammate, then so be it. Yeah, it's one of those deals where you just gotta... You just gotta say, forget, forget being teammates... As long as I don't wreck him, I should be fine. That's usually the mentality that, that, that wins you race without making an enemy out of a teammate. 
but now Polanski gets shuffled up high. Roberto Crown Jr. to the lead with help from Christian Vargas. Brock makes a move into the picture. And how about Case and Cooper in this 27? Never, He's never finished in the top 20 in a one-up Superstar Series race. And now look at him. He's in the top five, closing in on 10 to go in this race. That Nike Chevrolet of Case and Cooper doing a very nice job running in the top 10. He's had a b abysmal season to start. But a top 10 here will turn all of that around in a big hurry. Yeah, he started almost right there, almost dead last, and I'm sure he's loving being able to be up here right now. And meanwhile, Brock just can't get back up there at the moment. Vargas is keeping him back, but... Here's the second... We got, we got a second pack here being led by Diego Yepes in 11th. These guys are hoping for a yellow flag as soon as humanly possible to try and catch back up to the lead group of 10. You see Jake McMillan, he's a lap car, but everybody else still on the lead lap. Then you have this foursome led by Henry Thomas. You got Justin Henley in here, Daniel Voiles and Justin Hutchinson. You got this group, you got this group back here, Echo Ross and a few, and all of the Carter Racing System Toyotas are in this group. Got, and we're recycling our way through the field. Jason Parker is back here. And these are the cars that had trouble on pit road. Jake U. Halleck among them. Brandon Beal in the 37, Jeff Fulton we mentioned with damage, and Anderson Reed with a bit of damage as well. These guys are at the tail end of the field with Jason Parker. They are definitely hoping for a yellow flag because at this point, they are going to finish well down the order if things don't change in a big hurry. Yeah, it, it'd be nice to have a yellow, a yellow, but at the same time, you don't want that yellow to come too late for the race to restart because the way this works out, caution comes out with Definitely with less than five to go, it, it, it's going to be over. You want it to come soon, and it's very soon, as now it's a four-car single-file train led by Crown, Vargas, Cooper, and Brock. Now Cale Tesker Jr. is joining that group, but now William Brock makes a move on the 27, who blocks it off. Coming to ten laps to go at the line, Roberto Crown Jr. in the Capard seat, trying to get career win number one here at Talladega. And I think that'd be huge for, for Crown to get that win. And I know Vargas is hungry for win as well, but Crown, I know he was in the running for at Atlanta. I remember watching I remember watching him go and he was in the running for a while, but then it just didn't play out for him the way he wanted. And this this I think would be a great a great makeup way for him to win. Even even if it is, like we said before, the great equalizer, it's still a win and He'll take it. I know. I know that for sure. Wouldn't it be something if someone like Casey Cooper or Felix Anderson went to victory lane? Neither of these two have done that in their careers. They, neither of them have even finished in the top ten before, and they're both assured of that at least, barring any issues. But Cooper and Anderson both running in the top ten with Cooper a very strong third in this race. Imagine if BTB Motorsports got themselves on the podium in this race. That would be an incredible story as now Cooper makes a move for second on Christian Vargas as they're be trying to be chased down by this second pack of cars. But if these guys keep running side by side and three wide, they're gonna they're not going to have a shot at catching these guys. Well, as I say that, they're also going side by side and three wide. But it doesn't help anybody's case when you're trying to catch the other group. No, uh, it... When you're going side by side and the other groups, if you have a group going single file, you're going side by side. You're going to... Depending on how many cars are in your pack, you're going to get caught. However, though the second group is still at least seven seconds behind these guys, so unless the yellow comes out imminently, and I mean within the next lap or two, they're not going to catch up because we're starting to get into that territory of a caution flag coming too soon, coming coming too late for the race to restart. And even if we get one now, what would we what would we get? Three or four laps of, r of racing, maybe two if we're unfortunate. That's not really indicative of what this race has become but if a caution doesn't come out we're gonna set a new record for the one-up superstar series the fastest race ever because the average speed even after a set of pit stops well over 220 miles per hour as they come up to potentially lap jason parker here in a brief moment yeah parker just hopefully he'll just move on out of the way and get by the flag stand before before these guys catch him, they'll, he'll probably be showing the courtesy flag. I don't, I don't doubt that for a second. But the question is, for if you're Jason Parker, where do you go when these guys are all three and four wide behind you? 
Although, he's going slow enough, I think he's just gonna... Well, it's gonna be close, but I think he is gonna give oh. way. He does give way. Oh, he almost... Oh! I did see contact between Steve and Gale and Jason Parker. That's gonna be interesting to keep an eye on. But could they be trying to pick up Jason Parker into this pack? Because 12 cars are better than 11. I just don't know if Parker's got the speed to hang on to, these, to this group. And if he can't, then this is going to thwart the bids of all of these guys to try and win this race. Uh, yeah, it's... Oh, and now Tesker, oh, he's going to be annoyed. And it's... Yeah, I think that just ended... Pending an issue with these, these five up here, I think that that's... That's Brock's chances to over. That's Crown's chances over. It's looking like it's these five right here, maybe six, if if the 08 there can get back up there. And it looks like he can, so make that a six-car battle. And I wouldn't be so sure that those guys at the back, that their chances are over, because they're starting to get single file. And with these six running in double-wide formation, I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to keep an eye on, because if these guys stay side-by-side, side, and those guys go single file, we're going to have a real battle on our hands. As this, well, we're going to get a free wide battle on our hands right now, coming to four laps to go at Talladega. Yep, we're definitely in. Caution ends the race territory now, so everybody's just hoping to keep it together because they want a shot. They do not want a yellow now. They want they want to be able to finish this out and, and have a shot at winning is, okay, so I was mistaken, and I, I'm glad I was mistaken. They've all caught back up, so now it's back to being a top ten battle with the lap car of J.D. Martin burning for good measure, but now Stephen Hunter makes a move on Jared Polanski to try and take the lead. Wouldn't it be poetic justice? A week after he gets tied on the all-times win list for Stephen Hunter to take it back in a, in a commanding win at Talladega. Wouldn't that be something? Because now, we come to three laps to go, and we still have the top ten, all with a shot at the race win. Yeah. Hunter still trying to get off Plansky. Plansky just has such a good car. Now here comes William Brock again and Crown. I thought for sure he might be done, but he's still got a shot. And I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what happens here. Is oh, there he goes inside of Brock right here, three wide. Well, was three wide. Roberto Crown Jr. has got to time this right. He needs to time this run. He doesn't want to get in the lead too early because that'll open the door for. For the, for the others to do what they what he did to them earlier. We're now coming to two laps to go at Talladega. And is it going to be Hunter at the line? I think it will be by a very thin margin. Doesn't even show wow. on the scoreboard. But we've got two laps to go. St and we've got the, the old rivals back at it again. Stephen Hunter and Jared Polanski. They would finish 1-2 so often back, in, back last year. And now they're in fit shape to do it again. Coming to the white flag at Talladega. Yeah, it, it's definitely looking pretty good here. The rivalry continues at, as of at this moment. Oh, it looks like we got an I issue have... here. We got one on slowing, and it's Devin Fair oh, no. in the 08. A heartbreak for Devin Fair. Oh. His hopes of winning this race are dashed. Coming to the white flag this time, it is Polanski by a nose ahead of Stephen Hunter. Devin Fair will finish very far down the order of this late pit stop. But now... For the final time, we come off turn two. Hunter's got a nose ahead of Polanski. He's g Polanski's going to have to make a huge run, and he's going to need William Brock to give him the push of his life to do it. Yeah, it's... Man, what heartbreak for Devin Fair, but it, that's how it goes sometimes. And right now, Hunt, Hunter, Polanski... Oh, I, don't know, I don't know who I would root for here. As these guys come into the tri-oval. Coming to the tri-oval tri for the final time. This is going to be a really close battle. If, if There's not going to be enough time. Coming to the checkered flag. Who's going to get at the line? And it will be uh -oh. at the line. Jared Polanski with career win number eight. He ties Stephen Hunter. He ties Jeffrey Finguy. It is three appeal here at Talladega. And now Jared Polanski with his eighth career win joins those two at the top of the list. You gotta feel for Devin Fair, though. What? Coming to the white flag, he's in with a shot at the victory, but at the checkered flag, 36 for the driver of the 08. Uh, what heartbreak for Fair. And, uh, Hunter really wanted to break that tie with Finn Guy. Now he's got to deal with two of them tying him, and he's 
probably going to be more determined than ever going into the next race. So, Roberto Crown Jr. will come home third. I believe that's his career best result in the Superstar Series. William Brock, fourth. Felix Anderson with his first career top ten in the Superstar Series, and he makes it a top five and fifth. Stephen Gale comes home sixth ahead of Casey Cooper, who gets his first top ten in Superstar competition. He's seventh ahead of Kale Testar Jr., eighth, Christian Vargas, ninth, and you have to go all the way back to that second pack to find Diego Yepes, who rounds out the top ten in this one. Amazingly, That's... we just ran caution free at Talladega with a record setting average speed of 224 miles per hour. The all time fastest race in one of Superstar Series history. And would you believe it? We had a margin of victory so small, we could barely even judge it on our scorecards. Yeah, that, that was impressive right there. They were side by side for the last few laps, and I wasn't sure who was going to have the advantage. And I just saw there a. Uh... Holster and Daniel Bouchard, like, like I said before, this the, it, starting up front don't matter. He unfortunately ended up finishing 30th. So, we say goodbye from Talladega for now, but we will be back during the playoffs this year. And boy, if you thought this race was going to be an equalizer, imagine what it's going to be like when 15 drivers are racing for a championship later this year. That will be a whole lot of fun. And next week, next week, we head to the out west to the Denver Motorsports Park in Aurora, Colorado. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've seen a lot of passes be made there, and I'm sh and I'm sure that Jared Polanski is going to be looking forward to continuing this string of good momentum. He is a winner again, and he and it gets his he gets his first Super Speedway win as well here at Talladega. So from James Ellison and from myself as well, from the fastest race in one up Superstar Series history, we say goodbye for now. We'll see you again in Denver next week. But pro major props to Jared Polanski. He does it. He ties the record once again. Now it is three men on top headed towards Denver. Who will be the first to reach nine?